Hey guys, Matt DeLong with Real Life Trading and I wanna show you how I back trade every day, spending 20 minutes a day, every single day. Follow me. First thing you wanna do is go to Google and search download Zoom for Mac or for, for, for PC. Uh, you get a result like this, you click on this and you click download and it is downloading. Now I already have this installed, but you would follow a similar step obviously for PC. So once you have it installed, you open Zoom, you log in and you click new meeting. Then you click screen share, you pick which screen you want, you click share that share screen and then you click record. Boom, you are now recording your charts. So let's back trade, let's start with LK. And when I go up here to the replay, bar replay, I get this, click this button and I get this red line. And the red line is basically just saying, hey, where would you like to start the replay? So I wanna go back to the beginning of the day on LK on a five minute chart. And you have this handy toolbar here when you're in replay mode. And you can basically you have two buttons that you use to cycle forward. One is play and one is forward. So play basically runs through each candle and <laughs> lets it play out. Now this other button will let you cycle one at a time. So <clears throat> since I <laughs> kind of messed that up playing all that so quick, is I actually like this, this setup right here. So this is, um, this gold orangish mustardish looking line is VWAP in the volume weighted average price. And most day traders use that a lot on their screens. And what that refers to is um, it's like, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like an average price of what was paid per share throughout the day. And most traders will tell you that it is bullish to be above this line and it is bearish below. So I like entering a trade when it breaks below and it's retesting to see if it goes higher. Now, what this could do is I'm, I'm thinking that the stock will, let's just see what Mr. Squiggle says, will go up, kind of retest and go higher. So this could continue going lower, but I'm going to use a stop limit order on this to buy, which means I wanna wait for the price to kind of get up. Now again, you guys are all probably thinking, well Matt, it's bullish below. Yes, that's correct. However, once it goes above, wouldn't that be bullish? And is bearish below, bullish above. So once it pops above, we're gonna be back into the bullish territory, right? So this would be my stop market order. This is where I would exit. So 39.04, I'm sorry, 3903 by 3865 would be my setup. And I would enter that into my spreadsheet and it would give me my target one and my target two. And this is this is how I look at is a trade worth worthwhile. I don't want a, a, a stock to have to get to all time highs for me to make a profit. I just want it to get back to where it was uh, maybe an hour ago. So this would be my one R target and my two R target would be 39.79, which would be right here. And again, I'm entering this kind of in my other monitor, which is a Google spreadsheet that tells me, oh, I basically just need to get back to the high of the day to hit my two R target. So again, uh, the, the stock gapped up, kind of retested a little bit, found some support, held above VWAP, kind of bounced, broke through VWAP, and I'm waiting for a break higher. So I would use my little toolbar here and I would click next. And you'll see the candles here are forming. And so in this case, because it went above, I'd be in the trade right now. And I would let each five minute candle oops, uh, kind of play out. So at this point, I'm kind of right at my one R. I would move my stop up just a tad to here so that I can lose less than one R. This would become my old 
stop. And I would probably take a little, um, no, I, I would hold it all because it, it only happened. I mean, three candles in a row. We're going to, uh, so most day traders know what it's like to hold through an S curve. An S curve is basically where the stock has kind of made this move. It's, it might retest, go lower, and then continue higher. And it's, it's a terrible feeling. This is one of the things you have to learn is when you see, when you have your P&L and, and you see this move against you, most people will panic and sell right here, right? Oh, I got to lock in half my R, half R gain. Well, you certainly could do that. It's not what the pros do. <laughs> the pros know that they're going to see their P&L move a little lower before it moves higher. And that's one of the things you have to just learn and be disciplined with is you need to either exit before the S curve like on a new high or hold through the S curve, one of the two, because no one wants to hold out for less money, right? It's like in a negotiation, you don't want to hold out and get less than what you were originally thinking. So in this case, there we are about one and a half R's. We moved up the stop. And if the next candle or two hits two R, we're going to take it. Okay, there we go. So 39.79. So what I'm gonna do, it, so I'd exit obviously at my two hour, but what I'm gonna do is I hit play and we'll see how the rest of the day would have played out. So if I didn't get the first exit, I could have certainly exited several more times. That is what I do every evening. Uh, that is what I do. And then I will cycle through my next, and my next, and my next, whatever is on my watch list. And I record these and I rewatch them every day. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that in every single one, but that's basically what I do. And most people ask, they say, well, what should you be thinking? What should you be doing while you're back trading these? And the answer is you should be pretending that these, this is a live market that you're placing live trades and use your risk management, move your stops, do whatever you would normally do, enter them into your spreadsheet, calculate your R's, calculate the number of shares, do everything you would normally. But again, you're practicing in a safe environment. You're practicing in an environment where you're not going to be losing R's, right? You can't lose R's when you're practicing. You can't lose R's when you're back trading. And then what I note is on this one, I actually um, didn't get in quick enough, but on this one, I could have made two R. So I thought, okay, well, I made zero, zero R on this today, but I could have made two R's. So that's how I back trade and I'll do all, I'll record all five of my um, one video that has all five of my, my watch list items and I'll back trade each one each and every day. And that again is five tickers per day. It's 25 a week and a hundred or more for the month. And there's no way I can't get better. No way. So my friends, you can't lose any R's when you're back trading. You can't lose any R's when you're practicing, right? So let me ask you a question. Do you want to become the best trader that you can be? Not do you want to be Jeremy Newsom Jr. Do you want to be the best that you can be? And if so, that is going to require practice and it's going to require some discipline. I learned a few years ago that you have to have discipline first and then the strategy second. Why? Why is that? It's because if you give a winning strategy to someone who's not disciplined, they will wake up, see red on their P&L, panic, and sell a good trade that is just taking time to work out, right? So discipline first, strategy second. Thanks, guys. And remember to love life, live life, and trade it. Thanks, you rock.